One of the main goal from podcast with robotics engineer was to bring forward their insights on how to become a good robotics engineer. So in this video we are going to compile multiple aspects of different speakers on the podcast what they have to say about a good robotics engineer and what they expect. Crystal Brooks shared a very powerful message to people who are starting their robotics journey into industry. The message was simple. The simulation is great but nothing can replace the experience of a real robot should i first get a physical robot or is there any possibility that i can get good enough to get into a company through simulations i feel like you can learn a lot from simulation some people need to get into simulation the reason i say that is there's a habit of roboticists to feel like that they can only test their code on the robot right and when you've got like a 1 pound arduino robot I still don't think that's really a good way to do it, but at least it sounds more feasible, but I've been on projects where the robot was multiple tons. So I feel like that there is, you know, from the professional side, right, you need to in invest in both of those things. He also brought up a very important aspect of thinking about robotics because robotics contain different problems from different domains, mathematics, electronics, mechanical and software. So what should we do? We should first solve the problem and then improve it then understand the whole theory behind it so we can optimize later on so we should not do the opposite and first optimize the solution that's what his experience was with the company he started working uh, one of our guest was linton joseph and we all know that he wrote multiple books on ross his insights are very useful for all of us getting into robotics and improving in robotics so what he told us that robotics is not just memorizing tools or just building robots it's about solving a specific robotics problem and then for that you create a robot you start small you stay curious and you try to optimize your solution for a specific problem not just generalize things we asked a very specific question to linton joseph after writing a lot of books tell us the definition of ross and its applications the concept of books at that time when there was very few uh, content available about ross specifically and people wanted to learn ross how you came to the point that books should be the medium of delivering the quality uh, knowledge about ross and its applications i started working on ross and then write blogs about it uh, and then i used to write blogs about it and then after seeing my blog the publisher approached me and once i started there is no comeback right because i already written two three chapters and i can't stop it and then i understood the drill how how to write then i started keep on writing the books because i understand how difficult it is and i know how to write so immediately i got the next offer uh, that is the mastering rose uh, all these books it's just a coincidence that's it paul gesell emphasized at the point that robotics thrives at the intersection of hardware and software and the theory so do not get fixed to one part of robotics because you are going to leave a big picture on the tray and you will not understand the problem in a deeper sense so you have to go through all of these through in step by step manner and improve yourself in one as ross is just about software so learning ross is not going to teach you all robotics so you have to fix your learning aspects or your learning approaches to progress in all of these three step by step as a research scientist in robotics paul also shared very important thing with the audience that to keep up with the updates in ai and robotics what he has to do is to take research paper ingest them understand them implement those onto the robots that he has and then that understanding makes more sense about where the field of robotics is going and how he should track his way to the next innovation that is going to happen so this is how he used to understand it is research and keep his self updated his software is going to have more opportunities hardware or theoretical side yeah to me i feel like there's more there's more to do on the software side like in robotics you have sort of the mechanical engineers designing uh the motors and the actual mechanical structure and you have electrical engineers doing the electronics but there's still like lots of lots of advancement you know to me on the software side and how do you actually control this thing and how do you connect perception to control and like i said these things can be done in simulation 100% right the same algorithms are going to run there as they're going to run on the real robot um and there's some sim to real gap so maybe it's not going to work perfectly but you get to really implement state of the art methods whereas 
if you're you know if you're trying to build some electronic components yourself it's just just too much to ask for one person a well known robotics engineer sebastian castro because of his special educational content and his contributions he shared a very common message but still very efficient that it is not all about theory of robotics that you should be knowing but how deeply you understand it and deeply you understand is through practical implementation he did not just said it that deeply understanding is just practical implementation he gave it a different angle to it by explaining the people he is looking forward to hire is through this criteria that whatever they have built they should be able to explain that why their robot is behaving in such a manner and this is very important as an interesting one that i will be also doing that whatever you create explain why the robot is behaving like this it's stable unstable faster slower and many intricacies in the robotic jargons but explaining what you have done that's how it represents your software control and your development practices how you have organized those into a robotics application let's take a look on his thought on uh, future of embodied ai what do you uh, think about ai and robotics specifically how it is going to work in production of robotics and development of robotics we understand research will help what do you think about integrating ai models for production quality robots so obviously ai is not like a monolithic thing so there are certain aspects of of that field where people are more mature than others right I think a place is that has really been working really well for production systems is the perception side. So, you know, ever since convolutional neural nets became a thing, would that be over 10 years ago now? Um people have like found very good ways to to productionalize that, right? You know, it's super easy for you to like grab a model and fine tune it to detect the object you care about. Um there's now foundation models like meta segment anything where you can just find stuff if it's easy to easily separated. So, I think uh, you know, perception side it absolutely is being used in production like all these like warehouse robots or assembly line robots um a lot of them are detecting parts using you know machine learning based perception josh nuance a very well known robotics content creator on youtube we all know him he talked about building robotics platform before even ross was popular and he found out a lot of things about ross that are good for his work and give us a simple message don't focus on the tools focus on the problem understand the problem deeply before choosing a tool so you understand which tool might be helpful for you so whether you're using ixsim or webots or whatever those those are still only simulating an environment they they're not a full framework for you to build your solution on top of um there are other platforms out there for that but ross is definitely the dominant one in that space Josh encourage engineers to get strong on C++, Linux and debugging skills upon hardware and software because these are the skills that are going to be valuable as long as there are machines and people are building it. Also he mentioned the importance of MATLAB of simulating your real hardware before getting on to an actual one where the stakes are high, machines are big and you can test a lot of physical properties. of and constraints on your machines next guest that we wanted to bring forward is francisco who is author of ross to book a very mm. great book that i would recommend everyone to go through it once who are getting into robotics and ross to systems he brought up a very important message that learning basics before getting into these framework selection is very important because these framework provide you a platform to just communicate with all the sensors and uh, connect your algorithms or someone else work to your robot but before that understanding multi sensor communication driving your robot testing your software the basic embedded level is important before getting into these frameworks because if you don't understand the basics of robotics and utilizing its hardware software capabilities those softwares or frameworks are not going to empower you so you have to be good and in control of your hardware available to you theory is not just something that should be left on the books you have to implement it and as a professor he is teaching multiple lectures those are available online as well so this was our effort to compile all the great nuggets that we can get from the podcast we will try to bring more podcast on this channel and extract a lot of information that we can that will benefit us and the people who are listening and spending time on our videos